Shalom. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rikah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders, a great millstone who rule well, who teach well, and a sincere salutation to all the oxen pushing this truth throughout the four winds of the earth, waking up the hope for the elect. Coming into another lesson, Lord, wouldn't it be edifying? This is titled, Our Women Are Waking Up to the Truth Slowly But Surely. Our Women Are Waking Up to the Truth Slowly. This is, um, look like a Judite woman, but she's a Jake talking to other females about the Isaiah 4 and 1 when it talks about seven women shall take hold of one man, which seven just mean completion. So she's really bringing out the truth to let other women know what time it is. Women don't want to hear it, but it's the truth according to the scriptures. So I'm going to let this play. Hey YouTube, it's Tanisha. I'm coming at you guys tonight with a topic called Seven Women to One Man. Yes, and it's based off of the actual scripture, Isaiah 4 1. Now, this is in my spirit. I don't even know. It, it's just God because I was just minding my own business and all of a sudden I heard that in my spirit and I'm like, Lord Jesus, you know, what are you trying to say? So, I did some research and I just want to make a quick video just to talk about it because this is so important. Ladies, gentlemen, seven women to one man, come on now, we have to do better. I'm going to get right into it. I'm going to read the scripture. Now, I could just read Isaiah 4, the, the chapter 4, but I'm going to read Isaiah uh, 3. I'm going to start at verse 16, and then I'm going to stop at Isaiah 4, 2. I stop Basically, at. chapter 3 of Isaiah is talking about the judgment, the judgment from the Lord um, towards sinners, the sinners of Zion, okay? So anyway, 3, 16, the Lord asks, the women of Zion are arrogant. They walk with their noses in the air making seductive glances, taking short little steps, jingling their ankle bracelets on their feet. The Lord will cause swords to appear on the heads of the women of Zion, and the Lord will make their foreheads, their foreheads bare. On that day, the Lord will take away their fine things, jingling anklets, headbands, crescent-shaped necklaces, pendants, bracelets, scarves, hats, ankle bracelets, blouses, perfume boxes, charms, signet rings, nose rings, fine robes, coats, shawls, purses, mirrors, underwear, headdresses, and veils. Instead of the smell of perfume, they will, I'm sorry, there will be a smell of decay. Think, okay? Bad odor, funky. They will wear robes instead of belts. They will have bald heads instead of beautiful hair. They will wear fat clothes instead of expensive clothes. Their beauty will be scarred. Women, your warriors will die in combat. Your mighty men will die in battle. The gates of Zion will cry and grieve. And Zion will sit on the ground exhausted. Getting into verse 4. Number one, when that day comes, seven women will grab one man and say, we'll eat our own food and provide our own clothes. Just let us marry you for your name. Take away our disgrace. Okay, so you all heard what Isaiah was prophesying about the women of Zion. Okay, so 
just, I know this is the old days and everything, looking back biblically. However, it's relevant to 2013. It really is. The word of God does not change. The word of God is everlasting and it applies to us for centuries, decades. It does not matter. This word is life. And I believe that wholeheartedly. 2013 is so many women that use their beauty to get what it is that they want. I'm telling you, there's so many women who are so consumed with external, not even really concerned with what's going on internally or what's going on spiritually. Okay, a lot of women live from the outside in instead of the inside out. Amen. It's the truth. When I think of that, I kind of had to examine myself and look at my own behavior. How much emphasis do I put on my external body? How much money do I spend on clothes, shoes, accessories, hair? Because I don't always wear my natural hair. I love weave and it is what it is. But how much do I spend on that? How much time do I spend adorning myself you know what i mean versus me spending time feeding my spirit reading my bible reading uh empowerment books to develop my character to sharpen my gifts my talent i mean how much time how much emphasis do i put on that compared to the time and emphasis that I put on adorning myself. Now, reading that, it really inspired me to make this video because women, I'm telling you, I'm not just going to finger point or nothing. I'm going to say we because I have been guilty, but we walk around and we have this whole, I'm independent. I don't need no man. I got this. I can take care of myself. You know, I'm beautiful. I'm fine. You know what I mean? I can work my way up to the top all by myself climbing the success ladder. I got my own business, got my own car, got my own house. I can take care of my kids by myself. Plus, I look good. I dress good, you know, money. It is what it is. You know, I'm independent. I can do me, do do you, you know. It's really a lack of respect for men. You know, I don't need no man. I can do this all by myself. That's the wrong attitude. That's arrogant. That's conceited. That's cocky. That's and God does not like that. Because of that behavior, God, he showed his judgment. He was not pleased. The Bible says that that stunk to God. <laughs> that did not smell beautiful. That was not a sweet fragrance. That was a stink in the air to God. And because of a stank attitude, these women pretty much lost it all. God had to humble these women. Had to humble these with men. We think we got it all right now. There will come a time that God will judge us. He will judge us. We might can fool people, but we cannot fool God. Based on that behavior and the judgment of God and everything that happened, he caused everything to basically be destroyed. He killed their confidence. He <laughs> took away everything that they had. And now, what they did was went to a man, went to one man, because, okay, rewind, before we get to that, God ended up killing off the warriors, the men, the quote-unquote leaders and everything. He started killing them off in battle, and it wasn't that many men left. Once God started removing the men, you can look at it now, so many men are going to jail, so many men are being killed, you know what I'm saying? So many men are on the down low or they gay. I'm not judging nobody. I'm just saying it is what it is. Real talk for real here. You know what I mean? So it's not many men left. So these women are like, you know what? Forget it. Forget that attitude, that cockiness, that conceit, that arrogance talking about I don't need a man. Now everything's gone. Sister girl got time to look at herself, examine her heart and everything and Say, you know what? Uh -huh. I need a man. 
it don't even matter. It don't even matter. So in this case, they were saying, let us marry you regardless to whatever. We'll, we'll buy our own clothes and we'll buy our own food and everything. And the only man that's going to be left in that time is going to be spiritual man. So it is going to matter. It's only going to be spiritual man left during that time. And we just want to be married to you so you can take this disgrace off of us. You know, just give us your name. We want this reproach zone. So now, to me, it still isn't even really a genuine marriage because they're saying we'll buy our own food or buy our own clothes and everything. We just want your name. I Meaning they're going to sew the clothes and they're going to cook. But you still, you, you still are saying that. You got this. You, it don't even matter. It's almost like you're so desperate. So I'm looking at this like there's so many women out here who are so desperate. They, they want to be married. You know what I'm saying? But married for the wrong reasons. And this is what I think God is still trying to tell us as women. Like, you have to really make sure that you put God first. Like, that has to be your husband. That has to be your husband. How are you going to get married to a man and you telling him, you know what, maybe I don't need you to take care of me. I don't need you to buy my food. I don't need you to buy my clothes. None of that, boo. I got this. All I need is your last name. What's that? What's yeah. that? Because you don't even care. This man could cheat. He could uh, just commit adultery. It don't matter. He can have two, three, four, five other women. Why? It don't even matter. Polygamy. Polygamy, that's where this come in at, you know, and, and you don't even care because you just don't want to be alone. You don't want that reproach on your name. You don't want this disgrace on your name because you think it's a disgrace to be seen. You think it's a reproach to be alone. A lot of women don't want to be by themselves. They just want to gravitate towards a man just because. Just because. Take that reproach off. Take this disgrace off. I don't want to be by myself. I don't want to be lonely. So... You don't have to take care of me. You don't have to do nothing. I flip the script. I buy my own clothes. I buy my own food. And even in the midst of that, some women be taking care of men. That's the women being proud. Men have to know their role. Men Having are pride. leaders. Being in, leaders. independent. Men of the household. And women, we just mess up the actual order of God when we try to take on that role. And like she says, it's an order. And do everything. The Bible says that we are to help me. We're there to help. So when you get married, you're there to help. You're not there just because you don't want to be lonely no more. You don't want to be single no more. You don't want to be looked at in society a certain way because your girlfriend got married a year ago and you still by yourself. You ain't found nobody. So you just don't kind of hurry up and try to rush things because you look at it at it as a disgrace to be by yourself or whatever. It's sad to me, and I just think that we have to do better. And I even look at this in another way, too. You know, the Bible says that we're the bride of Christ. Okay. Even having a covenant with God, you still want God to be your father, and you still want him to be your provider. You now, on that, she went off about... They being the bride of Christ. He talking about Israel. Talking about the men. He said he is married unto us. And he will take one of a city and two of a family. When you read Proverbs 8 and 4. He say. Unto the men he called. Okay. When you read Ezekiel 34 and 31. He say. The flock of his pastor are men. And when you read. In Revelation 21 and 3. He say, his tabernacle dwell with men, okay? So he say to the men he called, he say he is married unto us. So that's what she's talking about, him being married to the men and the women being married to the men. So we are married to Yahweh Shah, the women married to us. You don't want to just be like, okay, God, I want to be saved. I want to be the bride of Christ. I'm married to you, Lord Jesus. You know, you're my husband, Lord. I put you first and this, this, and that. You say that with your mouth. But this scripture here, but this scripture here, when it's saying, you know, 
they grab one man and they they saying you know we'll provide our own food and we'll provide our own clothes and whatnot we just want your name it's like saying okay lord jesus i want to be saved but i don't even really want to follow your way totally i still kind of want to do me i got this you still haven't given up that control or that that selfishness you still haven't given and that up god wants us to surrender everything to him once we make a conscious decision to get saved and and to have a covenant with him he doesn't want us to try to be controlling and to run everything he wants us to trust him and just surrender everything over to him and have faith that he will provide you know what i mean because to say okay lord I want to marry you. I just I want to gravitate towards you, but I'll do this and I'll do that and blah blah skippy. It's like no, you have to let go. You have to surrender all and allow God to be God in your life. You know. So I just think that we <laughs> have to learn a thing or two about number one being married. Number two, just being women of God and men of God because. I'm just looking at this like it, it, us women sometimes fellas us women sometimes we can make it hard you know we can look down on you guys and act like we don't need you and try to belittle you and act like we are so much better than you and almost on a, a competitive level where it's i can do it better than you or i don't need you you know that kills the brother self-esteem so i think that's the pride of women about uplifting one another, uplifting our, our, our men in society because it's already hard, but we need to learn the characteristics of being women, men need to learn the characteristics of being men, and I do believe that God is wanting us to wake up, and when I looked at myself, I'm like, oh Lord, I just want to encourage, <laughs> I just want to encourage my brothers out there and my sisters out there, like, sisters, don't think too highly of yourself. Don't put men down. Don't be so independent, you know, where you don't need a man and everything. Because the Bible says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. The Bible says it's not good for men to be alone. That's why he created Eve. So we need each other. We need each other. We need each other. We, we need each other. And I'm going to end on that note. I'm going to end on that note. We need each other. We don't want the judgment of God to hit us because we are arrogant and we are out of order. So everybody be encouraged and just continue to trust God. All right. All right. So she's telling women to tighten up, man, because this Isaiah 4 and 1 is coming to pass real soon. It's coming to pass. It's actually happening right now on a small scale. But she's telling women to tighten up and get ready. All that being proud, being independent, that's about to come to naught, man. Okay? I want to be head of the household. If you make more than your man, you want to control the house. Hey, the Lord is going to bring that to naught, man. So this is um, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. And it reads... But I will have you know that the head of every man is a Mashiach, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of a Mashiach is Yahweh. Okay? So you got an order. You got Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, the man, and the woman. Okay? It's an order. And these women who are out of line want to be independent, head of the household. But Esau did that. Okay? Back in the early, back in the seventies, man, Esau did that. Make women head of the house. Okay. This is Genesis chapter three, verse sixteen. Unto the woman he said, "I will greatly multiply thy sorrow, and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee." Okay. This is about order, man. Now this is, she went into Isaiah chapter 3, okay? All the things that's going to happen to the woman for being proud and arrogant and, uh, 
and, and, and wanton eyes and stretch forth necks and haughty and all that, okay? Being with another man, looking at another man, okay? Women be with they dudes and looking at other men. That's wicked. So this is Isaiah 32, verse 9. It says, Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, you careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall you be troubled. Ye, clearly, you, ye careless women, for the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. When they say the vintage shall fail and the gathering shall not come, that's talking about you with your high-paid jobs, okay? That's going to be gone, okay? Your government assistance and your habitat housing, your Section 8, and your Social Security and your disability and getting your stamps, all that's going to be cut off, man. It say, your vintage shall fail and your gathering shall not come. Meaning you ain't going to be no more independent. Okay? You ain't going to have no more of that independence. Verse 11, it say, Tremble ye women that are at ease. Be troubled, ye careless ones. Strip you and make you bow and gird sackcloth upon thy loins. And that's what she read in Isaiah chapter 3, 16 through 24. He's going to make you bear. Instead of well said hair, you're going to be baldness. Instead of a sweet smell, it's going to be stink. Okay, you're going to be stink. You're going to be bald. And Jake women bald right now, man. Okay, especially Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Instead of all that Gucci and Prado and Louis and all these different outfits, high, uh, high end clothing, you're going to have that, man. You're going to have sackcloth on your loins. Basically, you're going to be wearing. Uh, Auntie Anna dresses, okay? Grandmama dresses. And you ain't gonna be going all to these Applebee's and Olive Gardens and all these different places out there. You're gonna be cooking, man. And you're gonna be sewing the clothes. Okay, then the scripture that she brought out in Isaiah chapter 3, 16 through 24. These things about to happen to the women. Because just as the men had to fall, women had to fall too. And two-thirds of our women and two-thirds of Israel men is going to be destroyed. But you women, like she told you, when you read Isaiah chapter 3, when you get to the bottom at verse 24, it tell you that, let me read it, it say, Thy men shall fall by the sword and thy mighty men in the war. Okay? Because a lot of men right now, like she was saying, a lot of men locked up in prison and jail. A lot of men homosexuals, undercover, okay? They homosexuals, transgenders. And the, it's some men in the armies, man, in the war, okay? Whether they Navy or the Army, okay, or the Marines. They in some type, one of the five branches of the military, and they're going to die in the war, man, Okay? And only gonna, the only men going to be left out here, man, is the true spiritual man. And the rest of them going to be destroyed, okay? Whether it's by famine, throwing in concentration camps with that martial law, okay? They, they already died in the streets now, man. So there's only going to be spiritual men out here. And that's when that seven women to one man going to take place. And the Lord going to bring you down low. Real low. This is First Timothy chapter um, chapter five verse six, and it reads, "But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth." And that's how women live right now. Man, they living in pleasure. They ain't caring about what's about to happen, what's coming. This is Micah chapter seven verse ten. Then she that is my enemy shall see it. The Lord say, then she that is my enemy shall see it. And shame shall cover her. Which say unto me, where is the Lord, Yahweh, thy power? My eyes shall behold her. And now shall she be trodden down as mire of the streets. What is mire? It's dirt, clay, mud, man. It says she shall be trodden down as mire of the streets. Why? Because these women living in pride, man. They living in pleasure. That's why he say, women that living in pleasure is dead while she liveth, man. 
okay? And they're going to be destroyed for that because they living in pleasure. That's about to come to an end. That living in pleasure, enjoying life, want to be head of the household, not don't have a care for the world. This is Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. Every wise woman build of her house. It say every wise woman build of her house. But the foolish pluck it down with her hands. That's because she want to be head of the household. Because she make more than her man do. Okay. So she want to be head of the household. She want to control everything. But the Lord finna bring that to not, man. Okay. So Lord willing, it was edifying. That's a short lesson. Our women are waking up to the truth slowly. I want to say all praise to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rekah, Quarash. Double honor to the apostles and elders, the great millstone who rule well, and a sincere salutation to all the ark and pushing this truth throughout the four winds of the earth, waking up the hopeful elect. And Shalom to the ark who are listening and learning. Shalom.